For the first week, I want us to read a short passage by Torrell Moy called Jacques Lacan. And it was uh, one of the final sections of her 1985 book called Sexual Textual Politics, Feminist Literary Theory. Um, the reason I want you to read this is because um, Lacanian psychoanalytic theory was hugely influential in the establishment of film studies and film theory. It's a really important cultural theory, it's got a long history. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit now about Lacan um, and I will point you also in um, um, in the next lecture next week to further resources to get to make more sense of Lacan. For now, I want to give you some very broad brushstrokes very quickly, very concisely about Lacan. So Lacan was a psychoanalyst who uh, argued for a return to Freud. So Freud established the, the field of psychoanalysis and then it developed all over the place. And Lacan argued that we should go back and read Freud because there was a lot written in Freud that, that they'd kind of forgotten and they, they weren't making the most of the, the resources that Freud had given to psychoanalysts. He was a philosopher, Lacan, and a, a clinical kind of psychologist, psychoanalyst, and he was a ra radical thinker. He, he thought radically. He wanted to develop. He wanted to develop theories. He wanted to. He wanted to cure psychotic patients and all the rest of it. And now Freud's famous for the things like the Oedipus complex. And Freud has a model where you have a baby who becomes a child who develops all sorts of obsessions and interests in questions of of where do I come from, what's my place in life, and the the child in Freudian child becomes kind of um, not sexually but libidinously, which is pre pubescent desire. It's sort of sexual, but it's not genital sexual sort of thing. Um, and that all needs to be resolved and worked out, so you need to kind of come through the Oedipus complex um, and have worked out, resolved your parent issues, so you no longer want to kill your father and uh, have prop possession of your mother. You don't, you, you don't want to marry your mother or sleep with your mother. You, you get it, you go, ah, okay, <laughs> I can't kill him, I'll just go and do my own thing. Um, and I can't have her, but I can have one like her. So this is Freud's argument about what produces heterosexuality. Different processes produce different sorts of sexuality and different sorts of um, issues and, and, and outcomes and so on and so on. So, on. so Lacan accepts this in a way, but he kind of radicalizes it, goes, no, the, the, the real trauma is not the trauma that you have to repress about your... Um, your desires for your um, so parents or, or family or something like that. It's actually the trauma of realizing that you aren't God, that you aren't that you aren't the whole world, that you are not coextensive and kind of universal with the whole world. So so Lacan argues that the baby, the human infant, is born into what he calls lack. It's a really key term, lack. Uh, the, the, the baby is born prematurely and absolutely relies on support. So the baby is born into the, the what Lacan calls the imaginary. That lives in the imaginary. It's like a dreamlike state um, of, of and of not conscious thought. So the baby doesn't really think as such, but feels and lives. And the baby f feels that the mother is part of it, and it's part of the mother. And this is what Lacan calls the imaginary, that's that stage of existence and that state of existence where you don't really feel any lack, you don't feel any desire, you just got plenitude and, and, and relaxation. It's like a garden of Eden, it's like Nirvana, it's, it, it's like a womb, right? It's that place of peace and security. No lack, no desire, okay? This is an imaginary existence. Lacan argues that the problem is that we need to exist in what he calls the symbolic order, and that's the world of signifying speech, meaning, communication. 
And the child, first of all, has to come to terms with this. So when mother isn't there, or when food isn't there, or when warmth isn't there, or, or when unpleasantness is there, like, you know, like a dirty nappy, or whatever, like, I'm cold, I'm hungry, I'm, I'm lonely, all these things, and the baby cries. It's crying because it lacks, it needs something, and it needs to learn how to signify that desire. So desire is born from lack. I desire food. I have to, si I have to signify it. And that is it's like a, a really a annoying situation we all want to be like you know in, uh, completely um omnipotent so we can just go give me a sandwich boom sandwich appears or, or whatever we can't do that we have to we have to live in the symbolic order where some people have some people don't and in the child symbolic order lacan notes the father represents the law the mother represents Pleasure, plenitude, giving, satisfaction, looking after, care. So the Lacanian conceptual universe has, at this stage, the imaginary, okay, dreamlike state of, of existence. Daydreams, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the symbolic order, where language is, where we are now, where we're thinking in, 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 in linguistic terms, conceptual terms, and signifying. We can also, the symbolic order is also about, like, what your clothes signify, hairstyles, appearance, skin colour, all that, like, it's, it's semiotics, it's the semantic and semiotic um, world, the symbolic order. The third category for Lacan is the real. The real is that which sort of cannot be signified, like the trauma of of realizing that you're not god and also that you're not infinite and you're not the universe that's quite traumatic you know you can't if you if you've been through trauma you know we all know about post traumatic stress disorder and so on can't really be signified what it is and it can't be apprehended and it's something that affects us fears um terrors desires that cannot we can't conceptualize them that's kind of the real the real is that which will hit you and 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 do damage to you or that which you cannot express okay so you have these three categories and and Lacan maps them on to, to to Freudian categories so the symbolic order and the law that's the father the, the uh, imaginary, that's the kind of maternal like connection with the universe, connection with the earth. And the real is, is, is the traumatic um, impossibility. Um, so um, someone who isn't Lacan wants to put it this way, the, the real thing that we have to repress, so for Freud we repress um, different kinds of um, un unacceptable sexual desires and murderous desires, we repress them. And we repress them because we kind of go, no, no, I haven't repressed anything. Like, I've never desired that. Right? And you can't even admit to yourself that you have had that desire. That's why it's a repression, because it's pushed away from your consciousness, it's pushed into your unconscious for Freud. Um, but someone wants a, a guy called Ernesto Laclau wants to put it like this. What we repress fundamentally is the consciousness of the impossibility of our own being. Right? Nasty. Okay. So we live in the symbolic order. It's the realm of lack. We've lost something when we, when we exist in the symbolic order, when we have to signify. Um, and this is what Toral Moy writes about in the first few paragraphs of the short um, section that um, I've asked you to read. Um, and Lacan, argue, Lacan argues that at a certain point in its development, the child enters what is called the mirror stage. And for Lacan, Lacan and for film studies, this is a crucial stage where the child recognizes itself in a reflection, in, in an external image and goes, oh, that, that's me. And it gets a sense of identity. Now the crucial thing here is that in recognizing yourself in an external image, you are getting your sense of identity, your sense of you-ness, me, my, my, my identity, from an external image. So we're bringing the outside inside, we're identifying with a screen, we're identifying with something shown to us, something that really isn't us. Now theorists and critics and film studies people and cultural theorists have taken this idea and run with it all over the place. 
Okay, so the mirror stage gives us a sense of our um, bodily, unitary bodily image. Um, but it's not, things are straightforward because we're identifying with an external image. So this is why uh, film studies has really um, been very interested in Lacan. It's one reason film studies has been really interested in Lacan. And Toril Moy works through this. And she introduces other terms like um, Lacan talks about the big other and the little other. So the little other, the uh, objet petit a, is the little thing that secures our sense of identity. So that could be a baby's pacifier or its comfort blanket or its thumb. Or it could be the thing that we as adults still need, that thing that that that, that is essential to our identity. And then the big other is like the law, the belief that we're being watched, whether that be by God or by a surveillance state or by someone who's going to uh, punish us if we do if we do something wrong and everything. And these are um, some of the, the fundamental kinds of um, categories that Lacanian psychoanalysis introduces. So I want you to read Toril Moy. It's only seven or eight paragraphs. And I want this to become the first foundation um, of our introduction to uh, psychoanalysis, psychoanalysis, psychoanalytic film theory and psychoanalytic culture theory and I will do another lecture in which I'll expand on all of this and more and apply it in a more leisurely way and at more length to, um, to this module and to your concerns on this module.